Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mike Prince Show. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince from the Open Mic Broadcast Network. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at Radio Guy. Instagram is Radio Guy 22. And don't forget the website is OBNRadio.com. The hits just keep on coming as we are now on the phone line with a very, very busy man, head football coach of Alabama A&M Bulldogs, none other than Coach Connell Maynard. How you doing, Coach? I'm doing great. How you doing? All right. Look, thanks again for coming back. Uh, we spoke a couple of weeks ago. Now the signing day has uh, been fulfilled, and you got 17 new Bulldogs walking around the campus, huh? Yes, sir. Well, they're not walking around campus, but they're official. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They officially yeah. uh, have committed to put on the maroon and white, and a lot of people are forgetting that you were Johnny come lately, and man, you covered up some ground extremely fast. How did you get that done? Well, I, I just you got to take my hats off to my assistant coaches. Uh, those guys really came in and grind. I got them in two weeks, you know, right. Then when I signed, I got those guys in there. I, I knew who I wanted, so we got them in there. And the administration did a great job of getting those guys uh, signed up, and 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 so then they went right to work, and we just we just strapped, man, rolled up our sleeves, and and tried to find the best eight to ten guys we could. But once we started finding those guys, uh, we wound up finding 17 guys that could play. We thought they can come in and that fit our system and, and come in and, and be play Bulldog football, you know, the type of football that we wanted to play. And, and so we kept getting them, we, so we kept offering them. And uh, originally, like I said, we only, originally wanted to sign maybe up 10 max, but we got 17 quality guys that we feel can come in and help us play. And then we still probably have uh, about three scholarships left for some some mid year uh, uh, FCS transfers or, or JUCO guys. Now, with that being said, what was your immediate uh, need of addressing from your vantage point? Well, I thought defensive line wise, uh, we needed some interior linemen and some defensive linemen. So we we signed four defensive linemen, two interior defensive linemen, and, and two defensive ends, uh, linebackers. Uh, we signed three linebackers. Uh, secondary, we thought was we was okay. We thought we need a little bit of speed, so we signed one guy there. And we're probably looking to sign maybe one more guy with it, one of our other three scholarships that in the secondary. Uh, then on the offensive side, uh, we signed one quarterback, and uh, uh, because we thought we had some guys that can get it done at quarterback, but you never know. So we signed one to keep the class on the right level. You don't want them all graduating at the same time. Uh, so we signed one quarter, but we signed two running backs. We think we got a couple of running backs that can play with uh, inside the tackles, uh, the tough runners. So we signed a scat back fast guy that can uh, get outside and, and take it to the house at any time. And then we signed another dual threat back that we feel, feel is an every down back that if he gets in the secondary, he can take it to the house or he can run in between the tackles. And then uh, we signed uh, two offensive linemen. Uh, and we really – we're really going to sign three because we had one kid here on campus uh, that was here last year that didn't play. Um, so really, we really got three new offensive linemen and then uh, four wide receivers. Uh, we felt that uh, wide receiver wise, we needed some speed and uh, some elusiveness at the wide receiver position, which we didn't think we had a lot of. So we went out and signed us uh, four guys that can, uh, uh, really get it done in the wide receiver position. They can run past you, and they can make you miss also. So all four of those guys can do punt return and kick return also. So we we felt that those was our needs, and so that's what we went out there. And now we we do spring ball and see where we're at after spring ball and see what needs. Oh, we thought we was going to be okay there, but we need one more guy here, so we'll go after that uh, after spring ball. And so we just got to wait and see now. Well, sticking true – to the main reform, you like those guys who can run tough inside yardage, ball control, uh, which help your defense be fresh in the latter part of the game. So it looks like you're stacking up in the right positions as far as those go. Well, yeah, we're going to always do that. You know, you need to be able to run that ball, and you need to be able to stay balanced. And, uh, you know, if you can't be balanced, you get one-dimensional. Teams have a good chance to stop you. So we always want to be balanced. And uh, like you say, we can pound a little bit and, keep the defense off the field, keep those guys fresh, and got a great chance of winning football games. 
We're speaking right now with Coach Maynard of the Alabama A&M Bulldogs. I mean, hadn't really been there a full – has it been 30 days yet, Coach? No, no, two weeks. <laughs> and was able to sign 17. Um, as as they say, I guess you can talk a possum out of a tree, huh, Coach? Well, you know, I I, I can talk a little bit. So. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Well, speaking of talking, you've got a very uh, unique uh, non-conference schedule coming up. Uh, you care to go into that? I know you have Miles, uh, University of Northern Alabama, and uh, Cincinnati, correct? Uh, you know, we can start off with Miles. D2 school is a, it's a rivalry game, and so it's first home game. It'll be it'll be packed house, and uh, we know we need to go to a good start. You know, we we got a few more bullets than they do. They D2, so. Um, you know, it's a game that we expect to win, and we need to play well to be the first game. And if we play well and do the little things, uh, we should win that game. Now, when you talk about your next two opponents, in particular, uh, the University of Northern Alabama, that is going to be kind of closer to your talent pool. What are you expecting from that, that matchup? I expect a good game. I expect a good game. Um, I think they were five and five last year or something like that, or six and five, five and six, five and five, somewhere in that neighborhood. And we was four and seven. So, um, of course, they're going to get better with recruitment and, and uh, we're looking to get better. And so we expect that to be a good game. It's a, it's a like you said, evenly matched talent-wise. And so uh, we have a game on our belt and so will they. So, you know, the most improvement is going to come from game from week one to week two. So, we expect to uh, improve in that game, and, and of course the competition is going to step up, and we just got to be prepared for it, and we'll be ready for the challenge. Now, Coach, from your uh, history and experience as a head football coach, when do you know what you truly have as a team? At what week will you say, this is this is who we are? What week do you determine that? Well, uh, you know, going against each other all camp, you, you really can't tell how good your defense is or how good your offense is. If the offense is scoring a lot, you will hope that you got a great offense and the defense is pretty good, but the offense is just doing so well and vice versa. If the defense is stopping the offense, kind of shutting those guys down, you're just hoping you have a great defense, and we know great defense is not great offenses. So, we, you know, you just got to hope that's the case until you get to play somebody else. And so, you know, we'll get a test against Miles, of course, but uh, if we where we need to be, we should handle Miles uh, you know, we should we should do well against them, and then we'll get a true test uh, in game two. Um, then, of course, in game three against Cincinnati, of course, now it's going to be the same as us playing Miles. You know, now they got all the bullets, and and we don't have as many bullets. And of course, uh, we just got to try to stay competitive. And uh, you know, we learn a lot about our team, what our strengths and what our weaknesses are in that Cincinnati game because the stuff that we can do against them, which we'll be able to do against anybody, and. Uh, uh, so and they they were able to kind of explore a couple of weaknesses probably because of, of the talent level. So um, you know we we we'll learn a lot in week two and week three, and, uh, and then we're heading week four. We play Southern in, in uh, Mobile in the Classic, so we have to be ready for that week four game. You're talking about an emotional high, uh, uh, your first conference game against an opponent such as Southern and Coach Odom, and uh, it should be a very uh, exciting uh, time in Huntsville Bulldog Nation. We're speaking right now with Coach Maynard. Uh, Two weeks on the job, and I've got to tip my hat to you, Coach. I'm thoroughly impressed to be able to sign 17 new Bulldogs on the upcoming season. Now, what are your uh, scheduled dates for your spring football, and when is your maroon and white game? Uh, we're going to start spring ball uh, the 19th of this month and uh, about a week, about 10 days. And, uh, and then we, uh, we're we going to have the spring game March 17th. It's a Saturday at 12 o'clock. That seems a little bit earlier than others, March 17th, huh? Yeah, you know, our spring break is the 24th. So we wanted to do it before the spring break. We didn't want to do it on the 24th because uh, half the students will be already gone. Of course, they're going to leave on Thursday and Friday. So they're not going to hang around for a spring game. So we didn't want to do it then, and we want to get it done now so we can uh, kind of evaluate our talent and see exactly where we're at. We we watch game tape and, and look at them eyeball test, but we need to get out there and see exactly what they can do, what we're asking them to do in the system that we're running. And so and for that's crucial for us to evaluate that talent as early as possible so we'll know 
you know, what other little plugs we need to, you know, if, you know, we think we are going to be straight at quarterback, but when we get through spring ball, we might say, you know what, we might have to go out to the Juco guy, you know. And so you just never know. And so the earlier for us, the better, because uh, we're new and we're trying to learn those guys. They're trying to learn us. So it's, it's better for me to go ahead and get it in now. Also, injuries. You know, if you get a couple of injuries, uh, you know, going earlier, you give them more time to, to heal and get back and be ready for uh, August camp and September first game. So I try to get mine in early for those reasons. Well, it sounds like a plan. And, and I was just thinking while you were speaking, um, this is probably when one of the advantages of having experience as a head coach would, would be a little bit to your advantage over some of your counterparts who are doing this for the first time. So when you see this and, you know, it's football, is football, no matter what part of the country you're in, does that allow you to come into this situation with a pretty high confidence level? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, you know, like you say, football is football. And um, it's not about the X's and O's. It's about the Jimmys and the Joes. So, you know, we got to get those guys ready to go. We got to get those guys understanding the way we understand. We know when we see offensive formation and motion, we know what play they're about to run. Uh, and we know when we see a defense for a play we want to run and why we want to go with the ball. So, now, our job as coaches is to get your players to understand that. And when they motion like this, they about to run one or two plays, okay? So be ready. Play fast. You know, uh, don't be afraid to be great. And uh, defensively, when you see this defense, you know what they running, why they running, where we want to go, what it, how, how you going to protect it. So get yourself protected, get in the right protection, and then execute the play. And so that's our job as coaches, to get those guys to understand the, foot, the game of football, the way we understand the game of football, and then they execute at a high level. Can you smell it, Coach? Season is almost here before you even know it, man. I'm telling people. I'm telling them. I'm telling them. It's almost here. It is See, almost man, after here. Spring, we're going to do the spring, and then after spring break, man, we come back, got about a month of school left, and it's, and it's going to be on. So it's, it's, as, as I'm excited. Yogi I'm excited. would say deja vu season. all over again. And before you know That's it, right. September 1st, footballs be kicked all across the land, and we plan to be there with you uh, as you bring Bulldog Nation up and try to rise out of the East. Uh, as always, we like to give our guests the final say and some final thoughts and collective moments you'd like to share. And at this moment, Coach, the floor is all yours. Okay, well, I just want to tell all the, all the Bulldog fans that uh, I'm excited about being here. I've been welcomed with open arms, and uh, I just want to thank them and the community, the alumni, uh, the university. Everybody has been uh, just outstanding. And uh, I'm happy, and my coaches are happy. And we're excited about being here and excited about the upcoming season. And it's a process. It's a process. We're going to try to get this thing turned around as fast as possible. And we're going to see if we can't get, get back to a winning season as soon as next year and, uh, and then try to get in that championship game um, within two years. Well, you heard it first, ladies and gentlemen. Coach Connell Mayner of the Alabama A&M Bulldogs ready to have the Bulldogs get their bite back. Coach, we thank you so much for being a part of us. We thank you all for listening. I am the Radio Guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter at Radio Guy. Instagram is Radio Guy 22. The website is obnradio.com. And if you're anywhere in the country, you can simply dial and listen 24 hours a day at 605 477 Until the next time, you guys be blessed, and we'll see you on the other side.